How to invest $1,000 in 2019. That is what I'm gonna share with you guys here today. I'm gonna to share with the four ways I see as the best possibilities out there for you to invest $1,000 in 2019. I wanted to give you guys four different ways because not everybody likes to do the same exact way. My way of investing might not be your way, okay? Your way of investing might not be another person's. So I wanted to give you guys kind of the four best options, in my opinion, for investing $1,000 in 2019. I think the fact that you even care about a video like this is very, very important because if we had a thousand dollars here, right? If I was to give this thousand dollars to most people, okay, nine out of ten people, the way they're gonna view this thousand dollars, they're gonna look at this and they're gonna say, How can I spend this thousand dollars? or how can I save this $1,000? Nine out of 10 people, if you go up to them, you give them $1,000, that's how their mind automatically goes. How am I gonna spend this, or how am I gonna say, man, I, maybe I should buy that new iPhone, maybe I should buy the new Samsung. Oh, you know what, maybe I should just save this, I gotta save this money, this $1,000. Our mindsets are a little different, right? The investors out there, we see $1,000 and we say, how can we grow this $1,000? How can we make this $1,000 into $1,500? How can we make this thousand dollars into two thousand dollars and build it into bigger and bigger stakes right that's how our mindset goes we're a little different right the investors out there okay so i hope you guys enjoy this today hit a thumbs up if you do and let's get into this Alrighty, guys option number one for investing a thousand dollars in 2019 is through stock market investing this is actually my personal way of investing this is how i invest almost all of my wealth through stock market investing meaning i'm buying stocks i'm actually buying a piece of a corporation a actual ownership stake in an underlying big corporation out there, okay? Now, this might not be the best scenario for everybody because the stock market does have risk, stock market has volatility, and not everybody can take that volatility, okay? However, if you're someone that can handle the ups and downs of a stock market investor, the roller coaster ride it is, if you can handle that, it's more than likely gonna be something that can be, you know, a way you can build wealth over time in the stock market, okay? So, there's a few things I would come, you know, if you're investing $1,000 in the stock market, you're probably a beginner in the stock market, right? So generally speaking, you're going to want to stick to bigger type companies if you're a beginner in the stock market. I'm thinking companies like Apple, I'm thinking Microsoft, I'm thinking Google, Amazon, Walmart, some of those really, really big corporations out there that you understand very, very well because these are the type of companies that, no, it's not necessarily that they can't go down in value because they can absolutely go down in value and you can lose money, especially if you sell out for a short-term loss, right? But these type of companies, you're going to be able to understand a lot better, okay? You're, there's a good chance you're very familiar with Google and Google's products, okay? Their ad services and YouTube, you're watching this on YouTube right now and a lot of things like that, right? Those bigger type companies are much easier to understand their business models, which is one of the core things when investing, the fact that you actually understand a business model. A lot of the companies I invest in can sometimes be between $1 billion and $10 billion market cap type companies, which are very small companies in the grand scheme of things. I know it sounds ridiculous, uh, but as a stock market investor, like a $1 billion to $10 billion company, is really, really small, okay? Those companies can be a little more confusing, can be sometimes a little more complex, or sometimes you've just never heard of it, so you're researching it for the first time. If you're investing in bigger type companies because you're a beginner, it's a lot easier to understand and kind of get your feet wet there, okay? Now, there are a couple different routes you can go with this, all right? One is the dividend route and one is the growth route, okay? First off, I want you to think about, imagine you own a home for a second, okay? And then I'll explain how this relates to this, okay? Imagine you own a home. There are two ways you can make money off of owning an, an actual house, right? One is that the house appreciates over time and 10 years from now or 15 years from now, you're able to sell that house for more money than what you bought that house for, right? You buy a house for $400,000 and all of a sudden, you know, five, 10 years goes down the road and you can sell it for half a million or 600,000. That's one way of making money. The other way is you could actually rent out that house to somebody else and collect payments, okay? It's very similar to the stock market. You can go a dividend route. A dividend route basically means that you're investing in stocks because you wanna collect dividend payments from them. That is your goal, to collect dividend payments from those stocks over time, all right? So imagine you invest $1,000 into a company that pays a 5% dividend yield. Now, not all stocks pay dividends. You can find that out on Yahoo Finance or 
or any financial website or something, but imagine you're, you're getting a 5% yield on a, on a $1,000. Basically, you're getting $50 deposited into your account each year, assuming they keep that dividend payment the same, uh, for basically just holding that stock, okay? And that's one route you can go, and some people will only invest in dividend stocks because they love that cash flow, they love how that company, they just hold that stock, and it pays them out dividend money and dividend money. That's one route you can go. The other route you can go is a growth investor. So meaning you, uh, you expect that company to become more and more valuable over time. So which means other people are gonna be willing to pay more and more money for that stock over time. So you buy share ABC at $100 a share, and all of a sudden five years from now, you can sell it for $250 a share because it appreciated in value, and now people are willing to pay a lot more money for that stock over time, okay? So those are the two different kinds of routes you wanna go. You gotta figure out, do I wanna collect dividend payments? Is that a goal of mine mainly? Or is it more around growth and I wanna you know, uh, buy something that's gonna really appreciate or has a great chance to appreciate as far as the money goes over time, all right? The great thing with dividends is it throws you off money in the meantime that you can invest more into that same company or different, different companies, whereas a growth investor, you're kinda of waiting for that stock to go up over time and then you can sell out for hopefully a big profit down the road or, or partial you know, some of your shares or something, okay? So stocks is definitely a great way for investing $1,000 in 2019. It's definitely a great way to start building your wealth up and building your wealth up. And the, the trick is to just kind of get started. You get started, I mean, I remember my first stock market investment was I think three to $400. Um, now, and I'm not saying this to brag or anything, but nowadays it's like, you know, well, five figures plus can be pretty much every single stock market position I have. You just slowly start building. And as the years go on, you build bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you take a loss here or there, you take a loss here or there. The trick is to make money a lot more times than you lose money and you will build up a big, big fortune over a 10, 20 year span by doing this and by sticking to the fundamentals. Now, if you're looking for more in-depth videos, I have a ton of really in-depth videos on the channel, stock market for beginners type videos. So if you wanna really dive into stocks a lot deeper, I have a massive amount of content on this channel that can, you can kinda dive in deeper and learn about stocks more. I have also have investing courses, premium courses. If you're looking to get straight to the facts, those are in the description, okay? Let's get into the second way on how to invest $1,000 in 2019. Alrighty guys, the second way you can invest $1,000 in 2019, and this is arguably, in my opinion, the best way you can possibly ever do, okay? is actually investing that thousand dollars into yourself in knowledge, okay? Um, things that can help you make a, you a lot of money in the future, all right? Especially, if this is a really great one if you don't have a lot of knowledge yet on, on making money and doing things like that. Spending money on yourself can be a fabulous, fabulous way. Now, the thing I always say is start with library books first, okay? Go to your local library and go ahead and look up books if you wanna learn about stock market investing or real estate investing or just personal finance in general or business building, or internet marketing, or whatever it is you wanna learn about, I say always start with library books first, okay? It's absolutely free, go to your local library, rent books, and just kind of view those and whatnot, read those up, and start there. I think it's really vital, because it's free, and you kind of get to, you know, get your feet wet with kind of learning some of this stuff for a free value. It's like amazing, okay? That's actually the way I started. Then from there, you can start actually buying books off Amazon. So if there's certain books that the library doesn't have, or certain books you just want to own, then you can go, you know, the route of ordering off of Amazon or something, actually buying some books. I own several books on investing that I bought back when I was 18, 19, 20 years old, and I still have those books to this day, okay? The video courses is a new huge uh, way of learning out there, okay? So a lot of people uh, read a book and they just don't quite get it. But a lot of people learn great through video, okay? Uh, me personally, I actually learn better through video than I do through reading books. This is a, certainly a great opportunity and it's amazing how cheap you can learn from somebody that has great expertise nowadays. Like I bought a real estate investing course recently, right? This real estate investing course is taught by somebody that's a very successful real estate investor and I think I paid like two or three hundred dollars. That is like a joke, okay? That is like literally a joke to pay two hundred, three hundred dollars from somebody that has a ridiculous amount of experience in real estate investing, right? If, if, if we're talking 10 years ago and I wanted someone that had a lot of successful experience in real estate investing, right? If I wanted to go ahead and learn from them and I wanted them to teach me the ropes, right? I would probably have to pay thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars in counseling sessions for them to take me one-on-one -on -one and for them to you know, feed me all their knowledge. And nowadays, the fact 
fact that you can learn things from other people that have been successful and done this for a long, long time for a matter of two or three hundred dollars. And sometimes you even get to have contact with them and actually talk with them and ask them specific questions like, hey, I don't quite understand. Uh, why do you do this? Or well, why should I do this or something like that? Like it's an amazing value compared to what you used to have to do. Because literally, if you wanted to learn from somebody that had been super successful in business, in real estate investing, stock market investing, anything across the board, literally back in the day, you either had to have an in with somebody, like know somebody personally, and they had to really like you and they were like, okay, man, I really like you, so I'm gonna teach you this. And they teach you it over the course of a few weeks or a few months. Or what would happen is you would have to pay through the mouth to try to have somebody teach you something like that, guys. Like literally thousands or tens of thousands of dollars. So the fact that video courses are now available is a phenomenal, phenomenal way out there. And uh, this is something I've started taking more advantage of as far as buying video courses on things I want to learn about. Um, you might think I'm all done learning. I'm 29 years old. I have so much knowledge, right? Absolutely not. You're never done learning, okay? You should always be investing in yourself, building out yourself and kind of learning learning more and more about things. Community college courses is also, a, a, in my opinion, a very good option for you. If there's something very specific you want to learn, community college can be a very good place for that, okay? Regular college, university college is so uh, through the eyes expensive, okay? We're talking, you know, a year at a regular college can sometimes cost upwards of $10,000, okay? Upwards of $10,000 for just one year worth of classes, right? Community college is uh, so much cheaper, okay? A lot of community college courses you can take for you know 250 to 450 dollars depending on kind of where you live and whatnot if you're in state at a community college which is a great value if it's something you really want to learn about there in person in a class okay accounting accounting is something I, I took three or four different levels of accounting in college okay I was I'm a college dropout I'm not the biggest believer in college um, out there right but in my opinion those three or four levels of accounting I took in college were very very valuable to me, just understanding income statements, balance sheets, everything across the board, understanding financials of companies. So if you're looking at a way that you're something you want to learn, you're like, dang, man, I'm not quite getting income statements. I'm not quite getting balance sheets or cash flows or something like that. You're, you're just not quite getting it. Take some uh, you know, courses at some community colleges. You can probably take multiple courses, two, three, maybe even four courses, depending on the price point with that $1,000 investing that into yourself. Uh, but make sure you're taking things that you actually care about and not things a college is telling you to, to take. Oh, oh, go do that science class over there. And you're like, I don't care about astronomy, man. I wanna learn uh, how to make money out there. I wanna learn about business management, okay? Take classes you actually care about. Investing in yourself is a payoff of a hundredfold, guys. It's a payoff of a hundredfold. The books I bought, uh, you know, years ago, back when I was 18, 19, 20 years old, you know, those books I bought early days of learning about stock market investing, like, like the amount of money those books ended up making me long term by teaching me all these things, right? It's it, it's not even it's not even like fair to compare it. It's just ridiculous how much value I got for them. Okay, if you learn, if you you know, reading about business books and whatnot, and learning how to build a business, and next thing you know, you know, a few years down the road, you build a million dollar business, like and you paid a few hundred bucks for some books or some video courses, who cares? Like that was a joke price because you built a million dollar business, guys. Um, so investing in yourself is literally about the, the best value you could ever get for doing anything. Once you had that knowledge, then you can worry about investing money from there into businesses, into stocks, into real estate and things like that, guys, and kind of making more and more money. Let's get into way number three on how you can invest $1,000 in 2019. All right, guys, the third way you can invest $1,000 in 2019 is actually through real estate investing, okay? Now, first off, you might think $1,000, that's not enough money to get started in real estate investing. Well, that is false. You can absolutely get started in real estate investing if you have $1,000. You need two things. Uh, one, you need to know what you're doing. You need to have a lot of knowledge around real estate investing, okay? And the second thing is you have to be able to sell somebody on this idea, okay? And I'm talking about proving it out through numbers saying, hey, here's how much we can make each month and whatnot, okay? So how you go about doing this is 
you're going to want to look for a cheap property, okay? Now, a $50,000 property in, in a market like Los Angeles or somewhere like that or San Francisco, it's almost impossible to find. However, in most cities around the country, you'll be able to find properties around a $50,000 price point, okay? Um, they're generally going to be in, in areas that are more urban or, or, or less desired, I guess you could say. They're not going to be in the suburbs or something like that. But you need to find a property that makes sense as an investment property that's around a $50,000 price point, okay? And what you need to do, you need to go out and find somebody that will is willing to invest a part of the capital, okay? Around $9,000. Because when you go to the bank and you tell them, hey, I want to you know, uh, be a real estate investor, I want to buy this property, they're going to probably say, okay, they're going to listen to you out. If you prove, if you know, have a lot of knowledge around this and you can explain to them how it's going to make money, why you're willing to do this, they'll probably be willing to give you a loan, especially if you have good credit, but they're going to want 20% down on that real estate investment property, okay? Especially since it's your first one ever. They're going to want at least 20% down, all right? So it means you're going to come up with $10,000. So you got to find somebody who's willing to put in the other $9,000. You can go to friends or family. You don't need to find somebody that's rich to have $9,000, okay? We're in the online age where you can DM pretty much anybody on Instagram or Facebook out there. You can contact people all over the world who are willing to actually invest money and have money to invest if you come across as a very professional person and you present yourself right, okay? And you explain to them why, you, you know, you're the right person that they should invest with, okay? And you design a contract where you guys get a certain amount of ownership, you guys have certain things there, you want to get a contract built, okay? So don't just go into this as, a, you know, being unprofessional. you got to go across this as very professional, prove out the numbers and whatnot, okay? So what you want to do is what you would get, you would put in your thousand dollars toward that down payment, they would put in $9,000 toward that down payment. You would get 20% ownership stake in that property. They would get 80% ownership stake in the property. In the contract, you want to be very specific that this property cannot be sold for a minimum of 10 years. The reason you want to do that is more for them on their side because you don't want it to come across as, oh, you're just trying to buy this property for six months or 12 months and, and flip it real quick and sell it and maybe try, you're trying to make some quick short-term money or something like that for yourself. No, this is a long-term deal, okay? This is a 10-plus year deal, okay? So the property can't get sold for a minimum of 10 years. Why do you deserve a 20% ownership stake when you are only putting in 10% of their money? Why do they deserve 80% when they're putting in 90% of the money? Well, because they're not expected to do anything. You're the one that is handling all the stress of it. You're the one that's handling all the work of, of the property, getting the property ready, presenting it, getting contracts done for the rental people, all that type of stuff. You're the one that's actually handling handling that. So as the person that's doing all the work behind the scenes, you deserve a bigger ownership stake. And you're the one with the expertise that understands that this $50,000 property is definitely worth an investment in. Okay. So you're the one putting in all the work. So it's natural that you deserve the bigger ownership stake out there. And you just want to be very upfront about everything across the board. Be very upfront. Don't try to hide things. Don't try to hide the fact that you want a 20% ownership stake, even though you're only putting in 10% of the money. Don't try to hide the fact that you want this to be a 10 year deal at minimum. Um, don't try to hide anything. Just be very upfront with those people out there. You might have to speak to a lot of people, but eventually you're going to get someone that wants to go in and somebody that makes sense. Okay. So here's how the math on something like this works. All right. On a $50,000 property, you should be able to get around $500 rent. Some markets, you might only be able to get 400. Some markets, you might be able to get 600 or 700 on, a, on a, you know, let's just say for this instance is around $500 a month. $500 a month makes sense for a price point like this, because you're probably going to be taking a little more risk because you're generally going to be working with people that have lower credit scores and things like that. Okay. So 500 bucks a month, you should not be, you should not have to put in very much money at all toward this place. Okay. It's not like you're going to tear out the countertops and put in granite countertops and all this new flooring. Like this is a low end property. It's a low end property. Okay. So 500 bucks a month. So basically a mortgage on $40,000 would be around $200 a month. Okay. So essentially meaning there's $300 left of profit there at the end of the day for this place. Okay. So, which means you're going to get about 60 bucks a month to you as a, you know, someone that's running that property. Okay. And uh, you should get a full payback on your thousand dollars within about an 18 month span. Okay. Which is phenomenal to get your money back within a year and a half span is amazing. Let's say even if it took two years, that is still amazing to get your full return on investment within two years. Never mind that you're building equity in this property. Okay. And this person's helping you pay off the mortgage on that property, right? It's a, it's an amazing thing. This person over here that's doing basically no work. They just ponied up a lot of the capital. 
they're going ahead and they're getting $240 in monthly payments there, okay? They get their payback in just over three years. This is amazing paybacks, okay? This is amazing across the board. Like if this person gets a payback in a little over three years, you're getting yours in maybe a, you know, a year and a half to two years. That's amazing on your payback. Here's the best part, okay? Here's the best part is you're getting equity in those properties and not only that, not only are you, you know, eventually that $50,000 plus dollar property is gonna be literally yours, okay? When that mortgage is fully paid, paid off, but you guys can go ahead and funnel the money into the next project in a few years. So if you get your payback in two to three years, or maybe even four years, guess what? In two to four years, you guys are ready to go in on the next one, okay? And you buy your second investment property, and then you have money coming in from two investment properties, and then a year or two later, you can buy your third one and a fourth one, okay? And you can keep building out an entire real estate portfolio over time. By the time you get to the third or fourth property, you should have built enough wealth for yourself that if you don't want another investor in on the property, you don't need another investor. Like You should have already built enough wealth for yourself by property three or four that at that point, you can start taking on the deal yourself 100% if you want. So if you want to start ponying up all the capital and buying, you know, $100,000 properties and putting in $20,000 down or something like that, you can do that yourself. You don't need to rely on somebody else to put in part of the money and you can get the full rental payments if you want to do that down the road. But the key is you got to know your stuff inside and out. You got to be professional about this. You got to put the contracts together and uh, you, you got to be able to explain the math on why this investment property makes sense for the one that's going to be ponying up a a lot of money there because they're going to want it in, they're going to want the numbers broken down how much am i going to get per month what can go wrong here how much are we going to have to put into this what happens if this goes wrong if you can break down all the numbers for somebody into detail it makes it a lot easier for them to invest and it's a much easier sell to get somebody to go you know uh, in on, with you on a real estate investment property if you know your stuff because everybody knows real estate everybody knows real estate at least a little bit okay everybody lives in an apartment or a home and, and as you to touching those walls and feeling those walls and feeling comfortable and understanding a mortgage or understanding rental payments or something like that. Almost every single person out there, almost every single adult out there understands at least the core premise of this. Where stock market investing, a lot of people are like, wait, what is even a stock? No one is asking, wait, what's a real estate investment property? Everybody knows, oh, oh that's a house, okay? Oh, that's a condo, oh, it's an apartment or something like that. It's, it's something you already have a big advantage of that a lot of people already feel comfortable in. They're like, wait, I can own a real estate investment property. I can get money thrown off to me each month and I can get a payback in, you know, three, four years maybe. And, uh, and, and I can also, uh, you know, end up owning that house outright over time. Wait a minute, this sounds like a pretty good deal. It's a much easier sell for you, especially if you can break down the numbers for them and convince them on that, guys. That's the third way you can invest $1,000 in 2019. Let's get into the last one, number four. Alrighty, guys, the number four way you can invest $1,000 in 2018. Let's assume maybe stock market investing or real estate investing or investing in yourself is too um, boring for you. Okay, there's, a, there's another opportunity out there. And this would be investing in cryptocurrencies, okay? Now, cryptocurrencies, Currencies caught a huge wave in 2017. In 2017 was really the year cryptocurrencies went mainstream and everybody started learning about cryptocurrency. People who had never heard of it or whatnot had all of a sudden been explored to this and what, like, what that cryptocurrency went up how much this past year? The cryptocurrency was up how much and whatnot? And 2018 has really been the reset and kind of the crash of cryptocurrencies. We've seen Bitcoin kind of go from, you know, 20 plus thousand where it reached back at the end of 2017 to now I think it's around 6,500. And now things have kind Kind of leveled out here for a while and I've noticed you know Bitcoin's kind of been stuck in the 6,000 to 7,000 range for quite a while and a lot of the cryptocurrencies have kind of leveled out now okay now with cryptocurrencies if you're investing in cryptocurrencies one thing is similar to stocks you're going to want to start with the big guys first okay the big guys are the, there's kind of like the three big dogs of cryptocurrency Bitcoin Ethereum and Ripple which sometimes you'll see called XRP okay those are the three big dogs of cryptocurrency there's a massive amount of crypto coins out there okay but the three main ones are those okay and so you'll want to kind of start with studying those and figuring out those first similar to if you're getting started in the stock market you want to start off with you know the apples and the googles and microsoft's and those type of companies of the world okay then from there and now if you are ready to actually invest in crypto to cryptocurrencies make sure you have a full bullish thesis ready okay here's how i want you to think about it if you are actually going to invest in cryptocurrencies you gotta be ready to like argue with 
somebody if they were like, dude, that's uh, you should invest in that cryptocurrency. And it's got to be something more complicated than, oh, crypto's the future or something like that, right? 2017 was a year a lot of people got into a lot of trouble with cryptocurrencies because of the hype, because of the price just going up. A lot of people got way too hyped. They bought in. A lot of people that didn't even understand anything about cryptocurrencies or they would just try to go off of the few like like the popular talking points. Oh, this is decentralized or whatever. They're trying to go off those few like popular points, right? And they ended up getting absolutely destroyed in cryptocurrencies, guys. You do not want to be in that position, okay? If you're going to invest in Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, whatever it is, okay, um, make sure it's because you actually believe in it and not because you're trying to get rich tomorrow and hope that cryptocurrency goes up 10,000% or something like that. You got to really believe for yourself that this cryptocurrency is the future, okay? If you can go, if you have a full bullish thesis on why this cryptocurrency you believe is going to go up over time, you, be, you believe it's going to be the future, then, you know, it's fair game. Who am I to tell you you can't invest in something if you fully believe in that across the board? Who am I to say you should invest in that? If you believe Bitcoin's the future and you believe everybody in the future is going to use Bitcoin and you have a full bullish thesis on all the different reasons, you have 10, 20 different reasons on why Bitcoin will be the future, who am I to tell you you shouldn't invest in Bitcoin at the end of the day? You you can invest in whatever you want. So cryptocurrencies is definitely a way you can invest if that's something you really understand well and you have a bullish thesis around it. Make sure you fully understand them, guys, because if you, you don't, you don't want to get caught in the hype game and the game of, oh, maybe this can just go up a lot and I can become rich tomorrow. And we've heard a lot of those stories in 2017 and a lot of it, you know, got put on YouTube about somebody became a millionaire overnight because they invested in some, you know, little, uh, you know, crypto coin. And next thing you know, it went up, you know, 20 20,000 percent and now they're a millionaire and they look like a genius don't get caught up in all that hype get caught up in the fundamentals understanding these coins and if you you feel comfortable there then it's fair game to invest from there guys so those are the four ways you can invest a thousand dollars in 2019 i want to know your personal way on how you're planning to invest your money in 2019 i would love to hear from you guys in that comment section as always hit a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video this was a pretty in-depth video pretty long video so hope you guys all enjoyed it thank you for watching and have a great day day.